be seated. I, I feel it coming on. I, I'm getting ready for tonight. <laughs> oh, I'm just warming up. <laughs> I'm just warming up. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Yeah. We're just warming up to praise the Lord. It's good to praise him, isn't it? It's good to rejoice in him. There's so much that we rejoice in him about. Well, we're moving back into, shortly back into fall. It's always a great time to get involved in the church behind your chair. There's little yellow sheets there, different areas of ministry uh, that we'd love you to be part of. Why not take the time to sign up either to help in our nursery, our Sunday school, youth ministry, you know, hospitality, ushers. There's so many different areas you can be part of. The audio-visual folk up there. Uh, just so many things behind the scene. Uh, so make sure you sign up. Uh, you know, even throughout the week, some things you may not even realize, there's a whole group of ladies. And you know what the only thing they do is they come in and make sure you're offering envelope and your notes are behind those chairs. They do that week in and week out. And also, thanks to those of you that were able to help yesterday with the servant socks and getting them ready. In a number of weeks, we'll be uh, giving our portion out so that we can fill them up, get them ready for Christmas uh, to go to our First Nation, the First Nation children uh, with Trinita Bowden. So thank you so much for doing that. I know it was a busy day around here yesterday as well. So there's lots of things that are just constantly going on. Praise the Lord. If you've got your Bible with you, will you reach it up or your cell phone if your Bible is on your cell phone? Will you reach it high? Take a hold of it. Now let me ask you something. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? One more time. Do you believe it? Amen. We need to believe what the Word of God declares. You see, people do not want to know how clever you are. They want to know that you're anointed and that you have a message from God. That's what is vital in all of our lives, whether it be from our pulpit or whether it be you are sharing your testimony or God's love to some other individual. It's not about our smartness, and God wants us to be wise, and God wants us to be educated, but above all of that, God wants you to be anointed. God wants you to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. God wants His power flowing out of your life from you into others so that they're experiencing his miracle working power. There is not a week goes by in this church when there is not somebody that is touched by God's power, where miraculous things are happening and taking place, supernatural things. We don't always have the opportunity week in and week out to share some of the things that are happening, but believe me, God is moving in supernatural ways. You are part of an incredible miracle. This very property, this building, this should not be here in the natural. But because of the foreknowledge and foresight of God, many years ago, he set aside this place so it would be a healing center to this city, a deliverance center to the people, a place where people come and can sense the very anointing and the power and the presence of the living God. There's something about this place that is unusual, that is special, and it's God's presence. You don't sense that everywhere you go. I've been to a lot of churches, and I thank God for the churches within our city. Lots of great churches, praise God for it. But there's something different about this place. There is a peace that passes all understanding. There is a presence when you come in here that you just know God is at work. And that reason is because there is a people that love God, a people that are desirous to be anointed, a people that are desirous to be filled with the presence of God. 
so that we can make a difference in the life of others. In the book of John, in John's gospel, chapter 8 and verse 32, the Bible says these words, and these words are amazing, and you shall know the truth, and it is the truth that will set you free. The problem with society in our world today is they don't want you to hear the truth. The enemy doesn't want you to know the truth. The enemy doesn't want you to know that you can be anointed. He doesn't want you to realize that power can flow through your life, that you can pray for people and amazing things will take place, where you can lay hands on others and God's Holy Spirit can come upon them and deliver them and set them free. People are bound today. People are desperate today, not only without of the walls of the church, but even those that are coming into the church, hurting, broken, needy. But here's the great news. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the God of all heaven is still setting people free today. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. And he will be the same forever. Because God's word declares, I am the Lord. I change not. Hallelujah. That's the kind of God in whom you and I declare here today. You see, friends, the enemy is already defeated. You need to hear it. You need to know it. And you must never be afraid of him nor the tactics that he tries to bring about. If you will turn with me to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, for a moment. We have these amazing scriptures of Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. Oh, friends, you better believe it. If the devil will tempt Jesus, he will try to tempt you. He'll try to hurt you. He'll try to put you down. He'll try to bring sickness upon your life. But, friends, Jesus has come to set you free. Jesus has come to keep you free. Jesus has come to put you on top of the mountain again, hallelujah, and to take you out of your valley. That's the God in whom you and I serve here today. And it says here in verse 1, then was Jesus led up by the Spirit. Notice, he was dependent upon the Holy Spirit. Even though Jesus was the Son of God, even though Jesus was God himself, yet he was relying on the Holy Spirit. If Jesus relied on the Holy Spirit, you and I need that same Holy Spirit flowing in our lives today. He will lead you. He will guide you. He will direct you. He will speak through you. He will speak to you. That's the kind of God that we serve. He ministers in and through our very lives. It says he was led up by the what? By the Spirit, praise God. God's Spirit is with us no matter where we are. And it says here, and he was tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards a hungered. The Son of God was human in the flesh while he was here on this very earth. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thy be the Son of God. Isn't that what the enemy tries to say? Who are you to lay hands on people? Who are you to pray for people? Who are you to share your testimony? That old devil will try to put you down. He will try to make nothing of your life. But I want to tell you, Jesus came to make something of your life. He's come to better your life. And he's come to work through your life to transform the lives of others and so that they will experience the same freedom that you are experienced, if you be the Son of God. Always the devil is questioning us, questioning our integrity, questioning the abilities that God has placed upon our life. It's God that has called you. Every single one of you are important. I was saying to somebody this morning in the office, we are the body of Christ, and every part of that body is needed and it's functional, praise the Lord. God works through each of us in unique and special ways. We need to thank God one for the other every single day. I know I'm so appreciative of everyone that God has brought together within this church. And it says here 
The devil says, if you be God. Notice there, questioning again. If you be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. And listen to what he quotes three times in these three temptations. It is written. That's why I asked you, do you believe the word of God? Because in that word, it is written as to who you are and as to who he is who lives on the very inside of us, praise God. He is all-powerful, hallelujah, and he's reigning in our very lives. Friends, when I look out here, you know what I see? I see champions, hallelujah. I see champions for the kingdom who can do great and mighty exploits, hallelujah. Not only did Jesus use these words that is written in the wilderness, but right throughout his ministry, he quoted the word of God. He lived the word of God. He believed the promises of the word of God because he is the promise of the word of God. We need two to live victoriously. For too long, the church at large has been browbeaten, has been put down, has not known their proper position and place. You are sons and daughters of the king. Hallelujah. You're joint heirs with Jesus. Praise God. We need to be reminded over and over and over again. In John 14, verse 24, Jesus said, And the word which you hear, it's not mine, but it is the Father's which hath sent me. You see, what's amazing as we share our faith, as we engage others, as we proclaim the word of God. It's not our words, it's the words and the power of God flowing through our very lives. That's why you need never be afraid to share your faith or your testimony. Oh, there may be consequences because of it, but bring it on. We're ready for it, amen? We're ready for whatever the old enemy would try to do because we know that God is in control and that he turns things around. These words which you hear, that's why I love as being, when I bring forth the word of God, I'll study, I'll prepare, but I know that by time, the time, by time, by the, time the message leaves my very mouth and it reaches you, the Holy Spirit has already interpreted it in such a way that you hear what you need to hear, hallelujah. You hear what you need to hear because God Divide severally as he wills. He knows your every need. He knows what you've gone through. He knows what you had to face just to get here today. And the word that you hear will be enough to encourage you and to strengthen you and to bless you. I want you to turn to Luke's gospel chapter 4, and we mentioned this briefly last week. But you need to hear it because this plays down from Christ right into our very lives as, as he quoted Isaiah 61. And I'm reading the quotation from Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. Listen to what he says again, dealing with the Holy Spirit and the power and the anointing of God flowing through him. Didn't Jesus do some incredible things? Didn't he? He's still alive today. He wants to do those same things through you and me. Think about it. When Jesus walked the sun shores of Galilee, he could only be in one place at one time. When he moved, the crowd would move with him. Sometimes he'd cross over the sea and, of Galilee, and somehow they'd get to the other side, and they'd be there ready to greet him. But he could only be at one place at one time. Can you think of the church today? The church is worldwide, hallelujah. And God is moving in every time zone, praise God. Multitudes are meeting and praising God today because they got a hold of this message. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's a bold declaration. Never be afraid to acknowledge that. God's Spirit is upon me. See, people need to know that you're anointed. That's why I'm always a great believer in neology above theology. Both are needed, but more neology. Because when you're anointed, 
Look over history. When you think over history, God used some amazing people that were ordinary individuals from the disciples all the way through, and he transformed them into extraordinary individuals. The Bible puts it they were unlearned and ignorant men. And as I said last week, we're a whole lot smarter in this generation because of our educational system and so forth. And all the great educational system, you got to realize, came out of the church. Think of all of the great universities that originally started. They were started within the churches. Now secular humanism has taken them over, perverted them. But friends, I'm telling you, God's Holy Spirit overrides everything. Amen? Shortly, you young people are going to be back to school again. Don't be intimidated by the lies. Stand up for Jesus. I don't care what professor stands in front of you. You stand toe-to-toe with them, and God's Holy Spirit will flow through your life, and you challenge them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And if they toss you out of university, then God will open up a door for you to be a preacher somewhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, we're too afraid to shake the status quo. No, friends, it's turned to start be, to start to be shakers again. Hallelujah. To shake things up, to stir things up. God's Holy Spirit is on us. He's anointed you to preach. You're anointed to preach the gospel. I remember when I was probably about six years of age. And I had to stand before the class in primary school and and do a speech for five minutes. I don't think I got through 30 seconds. Now you can't keep me quiet. Why? Not because of my ability, but because of his ability. Hallelujah. Because of his ability. Uh, Don't get too afraid. I do know when to quit. To preach the gospel to the poor. There's a lot of poor in our land today. I'm not just talking physically. Thank God we live in a, a country that we do live in because by and large, most people are getting by. May not be perfect, but they're getting by as, as compared to some countries that, that don't have anything. I'm talking when you think of the poor spiritually. People don't know what to believe anymore. People don't know the truth of the Word of God. It was taken out of our schools. No moral values any longer. Even within, our, even within our church sometimes, modesty has gone out the window. Ladies, can I say something? It's, it's time to become modest again. Some of you are showing more than you should be. I'm telling you, cover it up. Cover it up. Don't, don't, don't be a temptation to the man in our church. Come on. Some weddings I do here, I need three pair of sunglasses. The tops are down too low and the skirts are up too far. They're coming in, pulling it down. Well, why are you wearing it short if you're pulling it down? Come on. We're believers. We're believers. We want God's anointing. We want God's power. We don't want to be a distraction. Preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those that are bruised. Those are the things that we need to be doing as a church, reaching out beyond our walls, recognizing that God's hand is upon our life, that we're his children, that he loves us, that Jesus died for us, hallelujah, to transform our lives and to make us into the man and woman that he wants us to be. You see, the disciples preach Christ in Christ crucified. They didn't preach their own opinions. They preached the Word of God. There's a lot of opinion out there, some good, some bad, but preach the Word of God. Hallelujah. Friends, have you realized, have you experienced 
the power of God's word in your own life. You see, in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. There's power in the word. There's anointing in the word. There's deliverance in the word of God. The promises of God are for you. Act on them, believe them, quote them, sing them, rejoice in them. They're yours. Most of you will leave here today, and at some point throughout the day, you will enjoy a good meal somewhere. But the greatest meal that you can enjoy is the Word of God, and allow it to saturate your very being. If I can put it this way, eat, sleep, and drink the Word of God. It is powerful, amen? It's powerful. Acts chapter 2 here quickly. I know I won't get through all of this. We'll, we'll conclude next week. But Acts chapter 2, verse 32. Oh, listen to what it says here. These, these amazing, amazing words. The disciples proclaiming the resurrection of Christ. This Jesus... See, here's the difference between us and every other false religion. Their prophets are dead. They're not alive. When you look at India, my goodness, there are so many gods, they don't know which one to believe in. And if you stamp, stamp on a bug, it may be somebody's granny. Where a cow is more honored than a human being. This Jesus hath God raised up. He's alive. He's not in the tomb. He's in you. He's in me. He's in every believer. Wherefore, we are all witnesses. We may not have seen Christ face to face. We may not have been like the disciples who he came and and fellowship with, but we have experienced him in our heart through the power of the Holy Spirit. We have sensed his touch. We know his very presence. There's one thing I know, friends. I know when God's presence is present, and I know when it's not. <laughs> Therefore, being by the right hand of God, exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he had shed forth this, which you now see and hear, pertaining to the Holy Spirit that was poured out. And here are the apostles. What were they preaching? His resurrection. Because you see, with resurrection, there's power. There's power. Look at Acts chapter 5 and verse 11. We need this kind of power again. People have lost that reverence of God and who he is, but in the early church, remember Ananias and Sapphira? They told a whopper. It wasn't a wee white lie. This was a whopper. Sold their property. Could have given what anything that they wanted of that property, but they, they said they were going to give it all. Inspired together. One falls dead. Other comes in, was asked, what did you do? Oh, you know, that was all of the money. But it wasn't all of the money. They both dropped dead. Both dropped dead. But when God's power is present, when God's power is moving, amazing things Take place. A certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession, kept back part of the price. Be careful what promises you make to God. We change our minds too quickly. Well, you know, no, no. Keep your word. Keep your word, whatever it is. 
But Satan had filled their heart to lie to the Holy Ghost. Friends, I want to tell you, you can't lie to the Holy Spirit. You can't be living one thing and doing something else. You can't be coming in here worshiping God and out somewhere having an affair somewhere. Or lying or cheating or drinking. No, you have to serve Jesus with all of your heart. All of your heart. Is it not in your power, they said? How is it, verse 9, you've agreed to come together to tempt the Spirit of God? They fell down. But look at verse 11. This is what I want to try to bring out of this. I don't want any of you to drop down dead. I want you to be serving God and following Jesus and living right and, and so forth because God is gracious and God is merciful, but one day we'll stand before him to give an account. But it says when God's power and God's spirit is moving, great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. See, God is a revealer, you know that? God shows us certain things. We need to live for Jesus. We need that kind of anointing on our lives and that kind of power flowing through us. You know, they got into trouble for proclaiming the gospel. But look at verse 29, and this is what I want you to be. They, they had been threatened they were told not to speak in the temple and, and not to preach the words of life. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than man. You see, there will be those in certain places that will tell us, and I'm not talking about you know, being disrespected. When we come into God's house, there has to be a reverence and an order. There has to be structure, certain structures. Otherwise, people will just think we're out of our mind. But here they were in a situation where they were trying to proclaim the word of God and they were being stopped for it. They said, we're going to obey God. It's the same with our government. There'll come a time when the government will try to close the churches because we cannot come in line with their policies. It's happening all around us but we will obey God rather than man because God's way is the best way. Amen? Hallelujah. What is some of that power that flows through our life? People get healed. See, the ministry of healing is not only both compassionate and beautiful, but it has been taught from the early days of Scripture. Do you know that? Right from the beginning, because if you go back to Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26, it talks about Jehovah Rapha, I am the Lord, that what? Healeth thee. God has always been in the healing business. God wants you well. Sometimes he does it supernaturally. I love those moments. I hit the prodding from the doctor. But thank God the doctors, I believe, were sent to bring healing into our life. There's balance, there's wisdom in all that we do. But we trust the Lord, amen? Whether it be in our body, whether it be in our mind, if the enemy is attacking us, whether there's oppression, whatever it may be, or depression in our lives, we need Jesus, amen? Devil's a liar. He'll, he tries all kinds of things. But God is our healer. Look at Matthew 11 for a moment here. Great scripture. Verse 1. John the Baptist was in prison. Boy, he preached the kingdom. Many repented. But he was in prison, and, and he was hearing the various stories that were coming back in, and I'm sure that maybe while he was there, he was a little low in his spirit. There's times we all can get a little low in our spirit. That's why we need each other. Amen. Times, different ones hurt at different times. That's why we need each other. Amen. To help each other up, to encourage each other. 
And it came to pass, verse 1, when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to, to preach in their cities. And, and when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he, he sent two of his disciples and, and said, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Are you really the one? Are you this Jesus? And Jesus said, Go, show John again those things which you do hear and what you do see. See, when you leave this place, friends, you need to tell others what you're hearing and what you're seeing. You need to Skype it. You need to email it. You need to Facebook it. You need to text it. You need to Twitter it. Do some tweeting. I mean, you do it for everything else, right? We need to be excited. In a few weeks, we're, we're going to show you how to do some of that stuff. Our new website is up. They're still tweaking it. <laughs> still little things to be done on it, but it's, it's, it's at least up there now. They're working on that. But go show again those things which you do see and hear. Listen, listen to this as we, as we bring this to a close. And, but it's so vital to see what our God is doing. You remember when Jesus quoted Isaiah 61, the scripture that we read from Mark, the blind receive their sight. Wow. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. Do you know we have a part in that? This church has supported the leprosy mission for years, and because of the generosity of you folk, that there are many lepers that are cured today because there's a cure for that leprosy. Somebody say amen. I think this church has donated well over close to $250,000 over the years to the leprosy mission. Wonderful. The dead are raised up. Now, let me remind you, that's happened in this church. We have seen the dead being raised in this church. That was one amen. Now you're looking at me as if I'm crazy and out of my mind. No, if there's a need for somebody to be raised, God will raise them. God will give us discernment. That's why I've often said to you, if I drop dead on this pulpit, which I'm not going to do, Make sure you have the mind of God before you call me back. Because if I've got one foot about to step into glory and you call me back, I'm going to be awfully upset. Because I believe once somebody has seen the face of Jesus, they don't want to be here. Friends, let me, let me just tell you this as we, as we close. Some of us hold on to this world as if we're going to be here forever. I'm going to burst your bubble. Your bubble. This world is not our home. We're just passing through. That's why I take every advantage to be Christ-like. Let his light shine. Let the salt flow through your life into the hearts and lives of others while we have opportunity to do so. The dead are raised up. The poor have the gospel preached to them. And then it says something that is lovely here. Verse 6, and blessed is he, blessed are they, whosoever shall not be offended. King James is in me, but the translation is because of me. May we never be offended because of Jesus. He is so wonderful. He really is. I mean, I don't have time to go into this because I want to pray, but in John 4, 53, a noble man and his whole house came to know Christ. They were converted because their son had received his healing. Son was sick at Capernaum. Jesus, it was a canna. But a miracle happened. 
and a whole household came to know Jesus. You see, the signs and the wonders and the miracles are but that. To get the attention of the people, to put their focus on him and accept him as Savior. Friends, we serve an amazing God. I said it in recent services. We're, we're not here just to play church or to go through some ceremonial purpose. No, we're here to ask Christ to fill us if we don't know him, to touch us with his Holy Spirit, to bring the best out in our very lives so that we can serve him at whatever the cost. Well, there is a cost. You better believe there's a cost. But it's worth it. It's worth it. Even Paul communicating to young Timothy over and over again how to stir up the gifts that are in him and, and to serve the master even though Paul the aged had gone through so much. Yet it did not distract him or dishearten him one iota from serving the Savior that he loved. Love him with all of your heart. Serve him with all of your might. And if you really do believe this, you'll proclaim it. You'll walk in it, live in it. Give this word away. Fill yourself full of the word and then deliver it to others. Shall we bow in prayer? And you think right throughout the Bible as we pray, people like Moses, Balaam, Othniel, Gideon, David, Peter, Paul, each of them filled with the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. God wants to keep on filling us not like a one-time fill. He wants us just like a, a glass of water filled up. We drink it. Then it goes down. Then we get it filled back up again and up. May your cup be full to overflowing. You see, friends, we are the witnesses. We have experienced this touch. The Holy Ghost is witness to everything who is a revealer. You see, in Acts 5.32, my last scripture, and we are as witnesses of those things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them who obey him. As our heads are bowed in prayer, you don't know Jesus as your Savior. It's the most important thing. As much as we want God's power and anointing flowing through our life, we need to be saved. God counts salvation above and beyond everything. Because even if one is raised from the dead, sometimes others will not believe. But if you don't know him as your Savior... Pray this prayer with me right now. This is between you and God alone. Just simply say, dear Lord Jesus, I ask you right now to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. I've gotten away from you, Lord. Come into my heart. Forgive me. Forgive me of my sin. You know, friends, I need to say this because somebody needs to hear it today. Some of you are holding things against God. It's time to forgive God. We talk about forgiving others. But you need to forgive God because you're, you're blaming God for past experiences. You're holding it against him. You need to forgive him. 
Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today and come in to stay. And Lord, I ask that your Holy Spirit would be poured out upon all of us this morning. We need more of you, Lord, not less. We need more of you. In our humanness, Lord, we, we are weak, but in you we are strong. Fill us from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. And Father, for those that, that need that miracle, that need that healing, that need that touch, Lord, you're in this house. You're all over the place. We receive it by faith right now. See, even at Pat, uh, Peter's shadow, people were healed. Times we lay hands, times we anoint with oil, times we pray one for another. But right now, just by simple faith, reach out and take hold of what you need. Just say, Lord, I need healing. Or whatever part of your body or whatever ailment you may have, trust the Lord for that miracle right now. Because it's yours by faith. Sometimes God does things in a flamboyant way. Other times he just does it gently and softly. But he's in the house because God's Holy Spirit's in the house. So precious one, be healed right now. Be touched. And Lord, I, I pray for marriages today. Lord, I, I just ask, oh God, that Lord Jesus, that Marriages would be stronger than they've ever been. Those that the enemy would try to sever and hurt, where there's arguments, where there's fighting within and out. God, that you would bring a healing and a greater love. Because God, you love the institution of marriage. The devil has done everything to try to destroy. And, and yet, Lord, I know there are some that have been separated and divorced that that are still hurting and broken inside. God, that you would mend that and, and heal them, Lord, and just be with and give wisdom and direction, Lord, in those situations, we pray. Because, God, you love all of us in spite of what we have gone through or maybe if we were the one that was to blame. God, we ask for your forgiveness. So, Lord, we just love you today and we love one another. We thank you for your church and for all that you're doing. Now, Lord Jesus, as we leave this place, we plan to be back later for our evening service. Find it with your blessing, O oh God, be with us throughout this day. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. There's lots of different sign-up sheets out in the foyer. Take a moment to do that, especially for the Harvest Festival. Plan to be back tonight. Will you try and make that special effort to come back for Dan and Melissa David? I mean, this guy is, he travels the world, and yet he wants to be here with us. I think that's awesome. And let's support it, and let's be here tonight for that. Because you will receive something. Bring a friend, phone a neighbor, you know, phone a workmate, invite somebody. They'll, they'll be blessed. And I won't embarrass them too much with my dancing. Thanks for being with us. We love you. I'll be here at the front. Remember, if you need to visit with us, go downstairs. There's a little, some refreshment down there. That way you'll get to meet the various pastors. God richly bless you. Have a wonderful day. Amen.